Ever found yourself browsing through countless paint options online, unsure which brand to invest in? That was me when I first started my painting journey. I stumbled upon Vallejo paints on Amazon. Easily accessible and seemingly reliable, so I just went with them. But then my brother got me a set of golden acrylics for Christmas. Now I'm left wondering, should I stick to Vallejo or are golden acrylics performing better? Let's put them to a side-by-side -side comparison and find out whether it might be better to change brands. Before we start the painting, let's compare prices first. Vallejo, a Spanish company, offers bottles at around 260 each, where I live. That's roughly 15 euros per 100 milliliter. On the other hand, as a US-based company, golden acrylics are priced at approximately 7 euro 80 cents for a 30 milliliter bottle, equivalent to 26 euros per 100 milliliter. Almost double the price. However, golden acrylics are also available in larger 180 milliliter bottles, which brings the price down to 16 euros per 100 ml, making them comparable in cost. But price aside, efficiency matters too. So let's determine how far each paint can go. I've prepared test spoons coated with black and with the blank plastic surfaces to evaluate coverage and adhesion. The paints don't look exactly the same. You can see that all of the golden acrylics are a bit lighter than their counterparts. I am comparing the model airline from Vallejo with the golden acrylic high flow line. So both of them are ready to be used with a paintbrush or the airbrush. To ensure a fair comparison, I verified the consistency of paint droplets from each bottle using a micro scale. One difference I noticed while starting shaking the bottles was that the golden acrylics have a ball inside the bottle, whereas the Vallejos don't. Another noticeable difference is that the paint coming out of the Vallejo bottles have way more air bubbles. I'm not sure if this is coming from the mixing ball or the different tip shapes, but it's noticeable every time. Now you might ask yourself, okay, does that even matter? And I'll show you the difference in a minute. Next, I assessed paint consistency by placing drops on an angled sheet of paper. While doing that, the lid mechanism of golden acrylics tended to create more mess than the other bottles. After performing that paper test, I had concerns that the different droplet sizes affect the result, so I did an additional test to equal that out as well. It's not a huge difference, but I would say the golden acrylics have a lower viscosity, meaning they are thinner, which might make them easier to use in an airbrush with a small detailing needle. Then I grabbed a paintbrush and started with Vallejo Red. What you can see again is that air bubbles spilled in the paint. Because the paintbrush was dry first, I used two coats. Then I cleaned the brush and did the same pattern with golden acrylic red. And I don't know what you think, but for me that's a huge difference already. You can almost see no difference between the golden acrylic red on black or white, whereas you can clearly see a lot of base color shining through the Vallejo red. And you can also see the golden acrylic has less air bubbles. For the next spoon I started with the golden acrylic blue, and you can see dipping the brush in the color once is sufficient to get a full coverage over black and white. On the Vallejo blue you can see a big difference between the black and white undercoat. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. For some effects or use cases like washes you might actually want the color to be more translucent. But especially if you do hand painting and want an opaque look, you want as much opacity as possible right from the first layer. And of course you end up needing more paint if you have to go over everything multiple times. A similar result with yellow, with Vallejo on the left where you can see more unevenness compared to the golden acrylic yellow. But now let's grab the airbrush and let's see if we get a similar result there. We start with one drop of golden acrylic red to see how far we can go. And this one drop was enough to cover the whole spoon with an even layer. You can see a different tone of red between the two sides though. Then I cleaned the airbrush and loaded it up with three drops of Vallejo red. The difference between the two reds is quite impressive, especially on the black underground. The most impressive difference however was with the blue, where you can see a huge difference between black and white on the Vallejo painted spoon, and you see no difference with the golden acrylic painted one. On yellow, the golden acrylic has a noticeable difference between black and white, but it's still an even looking color on both sides. After that, I waited for a day to let the paints fully dry and now we can have a final comparison before we do a durability check. 
The image in terms of opacity didn't change much. The golden acrylics have a much higher opacity and it has more shine than the Vallejo counterparts. If this is better or not depends on the use case, I guess. Similar result with the red. With the red, the difference between the paintbrush strokes is most noticeable. For the yellow, you can see the black shine through both of them, but again, the golden acrylic is a bit brighter on top of the black. But this could also come from the fact that golden acrylic yellow itself is a bit brighter in tone. And again, with the paintbrush, it led to a more even look. Now onto the durability test. First, I just hit the spoons against each other, but that didn't do anything to either of them. Then I did a masking rip-off test that shows how good the paints adhere to the surface. And here it showed that the golden acrylics have a problem adhering to the raw plastic surface. Which to be fair is extremely smooth, but the Vallejo colors didn't have this problem. Then I tried scratching both with a toothpick, where the result was pretty much the same for both of them. And here is the proof that I didn't go easy on the paints. For the red Vallejo spoon I had slight paint chippings, but interestingly on the black primed surface. I think this was caused by slight bumps in the surface. I also had this with the golden acrylics red, but in addition the paint again also came off the plastic surface. And same result for the blue. So when it comes to adhesion on raw plastic, Vallejo is definitely the winner. On a primed surface, it's the same. Since I promised you in the beginning to show you why paint bubbles are not good, here is a couple of drops of dried Vallejo color with a pretty uneven finish due to the air bubbles. On your model this of course would happen on a smaller scale, but it can still be there. The golden acrylics on the other hand create a perfectly smooth surface. So now what's my conclusion? First I was skeptical towards the golden acrylics due to the bottle price. But now I think they will actually last longer than their counterparts, simply due to the reason that you don't need as much paint to get full opacity. I also like that the drops coming out of the bottle have fewer and smaller air bubbles than the Vallejo bottles, however they create more mess. When it comes to durability, Vallejo won in the surface adhesion test on blank plastic, but since I always use primer on my models, that advantage is not important for me. Ultimately, despite initial skepticism towards golden acrylics due to the pricing, their efficiency and smooth finish won me over. While I'll continue to appreciate Vallejo's color variety, I'll be more open to exploring other brands, like golden acrylics, in the future. And now I'd be really interested to know whether you have a favorite brand for paints. If you stick to one brand or buy from all of them. Let me know down in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next video.